Namaste and welcome back to the data structures and algorithms classes. The topic was bit manipulation. We were solving some really interesting question. The next question is a question which looks like this, right? So you have to find the length of the consecutive ones in the binary representation of a number. Now, what does this mean? Let me explain. Now, n, let us assume it is 1, 0, 1, right? If it is 101, this is the binary representation of n. And as you can see, there are consecutive ones. Consecutive ones means what they come next to each other. And what is the length of the consecutive ones? What is the highest length of the consecutive ones? It is nothing but 2. So your answer should be 2. I hope you are able to think. Let us assume n was 73. Now this is the binary representation. Definitely ones are there, but there are no ones next to one another, right? They are not consecutive in nature. So obviously your output should be 0 because the length is 0. There is no consecutive ones. Any confusion till here? Great. Now the interesting thing is this is a question which is very commonly asked in Microsoft's uh, coding interviews and hence all of you guys who are dreaming to get into Microsoft must pay some extra attention to how I am going to approach this problem. Before we begin with uh, writing the logic to find the longest consecutive one sequence's length, let us first start with something more simple, right? Watch it. n is 101. This is the binary representation of n. This is the binary representation of n. Right? Now, that n is 73. This is the binary representation of n. Any confusion till here? Now, here clearly there is consecutive ones. Here, as you can see, there are no consecutive ones. Now, I want to do one operation. I want to do an operation. And that operation should tell me whether there are consecutive ones or not. I'm not finding the longest sequence of consecutive ones. I'm just trying to see whether there are consecutive ones, yes or no. How will you do this, you may ask. It is very, very easy. See here what I will do. I will just take these binary representation, right? I will place it here. I will place it here. Now, the thing is, if in case, if in case, I was to right shift or left shift, it doesn't matter whichever direction, I will assume, let me uh, shift it to the left. If I left shift all these elements, if I left shift all these elements by just one position, by just one position, if I left shift, then clearly you know that this zero will go and if you left shift by one position, here you will get zero. So this is n left shifted by one position. Any confusion till here? Now look at it. Now look at it. Do you see something interesting? Here, this one and one was consecutive. When I left shifted by one, this one has come below here. This one has come below here. So wherever we have consecutive ones, if I left shift, the one will have another one below it. Would you agree with me? Common sense. Common sense. Now, between both, if in case I were to apply AND operation, simple AND operation, what will I get? 100%. One, 0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 1 is 1, this is 0, 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 this is 0. In other words, forget about what this is in decimal, but if I convert it into decimal, will it be equal to 0, will it not be equal to 0? 100% this will not be equal to 0. So that is my first observation, which is if I take n and I perform operation with n and n left shifted by 1, if there are consecutive ones, I will get a non-zero number. I will get a non-zero number. Simple, simple. However, here you can see that this does not have consecutive ones. Now, if in case I do n left shifted by one position, then all that will happen is this. These are my elements, right? All I'm doing is I'm uh, left shifting it by one position. If I left shift it by one position, this zero is gone. And at the end, I will be getting a zero. And if in case I apply AND operation between them, you can see each and everything is going to become zero. Would you agree with me? If I convert this into decimal, 100%, would you agree this is equal to zero? 100% this is equal to zero? Or maybe I will just remove this one more equal to because you will think I am checking. 100% it is equal to zero. I hope you are able to think. So my next observation is that if I do n and n left shifted by 1 with a number which does not have consecutive ones, the output or the final result is going to be zero, is going to be zero. Would you agree with me? So 
if i now were to now ask you tell me how will you check if the binary representation of a number has consecutive ones or not your answer should be immediately that do n and n left shifted by 1 if you get non zero it has consecutive ones if it ha if it becomes zero it does not have consecutive ones would you agree with me simple as that now that you understood this on this i am going to build up the logic such that you will easily be able to tell what is the length of the longest sequence of consecutive ones in the binary representation of a number how do we do it let me show you now let me just quickly go and write the code to check whether the binary representation of a number contains consecutive ones or not i'm not i'm not counting the longest sequence of consecutive ones just is it there or not watch it i'll create a static function which returns a boolean value and this uh, because true or false contains or does it not contain i'll call it as is consecutive like this any name you can give i'm calling this is consecutive now inside that uh, and what is this going to accept if you ask me this is going to accept my number n so int n i will go inside that and what i am now going to do is very very simple i'm going to apply the logic that we are doing uh, let us assume that uh, n is 101 like this this is how it looks in binary and definitely it contains consecutive ones so it should be returning true right so, so so see very simple i will just go and i will do one simple thing if in case and i will check if n and left shift of n by 1 i will do left shift of n by 1 if this result gives me non zero non zero so it's a not equal to zero not equal to zero means 100% consecutive ones are there so i will go inside that and i will just return true right now if this condition is false it means it is non zero so i'll come to else if it is non zero there are no consecutive ones because if you do left shift operation that's how it works so return true now false false return. great awesome now all we have to do is just call that function so here it is showing an error uh, if you can just put it within brackets yeah okay great now if in case i go here and i just uh, call the function so sysout is consecutive and i will pass n to it will this work why are you asking me let's execute Upon execution, one can clearly notice that if I give n value as 101, the binary representation contains consecutive ones and hence I will get 2 like this. If in case I give 73, so obviously it does not have consecutive ones. If I press enter, it gives me false, right? So it works. Now, this forms your core logic to actually go ahead and write a program which will give you the count of the longest sequence of consecutive ones in the binary representation of a given integer value. Really, if you ask me? Yes. How to do it? Let me show you. Guys, very easy it is, okay? Let us assume n is 101, okay? Now, I want the count of the longest sequence of consecutive ones, correct? So what I'll do is, I'll create a variable called as count. I am going to initialize it with 0, right? Initially count to 0. Now, look at this. This is n in binary. If you look at n in binary, then clearly you can notice that there are consecutive ones. And I am just highlighting the consecutive ones. And those two ones are the only consecutive ones. And naturally, the longest sequence of consecutive ones in the binary version of n101 is nothing but 2. I are able to think. Now, how will I do this? Simple. Now, previously you learned that if I do n and n left shifted by 1, this is n left shifted by 1, if I do and operation between them, I'll get a value, right? I'll get a value. Now, this value obviously is non-zero, so you told, yes, consecutive ones are there, but I want the count. So, how will you do it? See, this new value that I've got after doing the and operation, I will make that as n. So, see, I'm showing that as n. So obviously, accord, if you convert it into decimal, n will uh, accordingly change. Now that is a new value of n. Now see, again if I do n and n left shifted by 1, then obviously this time the updated value of n doesn't have any consecutive 1. So if I do and operation, I'll get all zeros. I'll get all zeros. Now look at this. How many times did you do this n and n left shifted by 1s 
till n value became zero. So this is the updated value of n. I'm showing that. How many times did you do it? You did it exactly two times. I'm marking that. See, first time, second time, two times you did it. How many consecutive ones are there? Two. So would you agree that just doing n and n left shifted by one, update that as a new value of n, repeat as long as n is greater than zero. And the number of times you repeated this operation is nothing but the count of the longest consecutive sequence of ones. So would you agree? The first time I did this, if I increment count, count becomes one. The second time I do this, I increment count, count becomes two. So if I keep track of how many times I did this operation within a loop, I will have that count. Definitely it works. Now some of you may argue, okay, in this particular uh, uh, solution or in this particular value, n has only one pair of consecutive ones, right? But the binary version of a number may have multiple consecutive ones. In that you want the longest sequence. Will this work if you ask me? 100% it will. Let me show you how it will work, okay? Now let us assume n is 110. Count is 0. Watch it. n 110 in binary looks like this. If I left shift n by 1, it looks like this. If I perform AND operation between both, this is what I get. That I will update as a new value of n. Automatically decimal if I convert it, their n values getting updated. I hope you are able to see. I did this operation once. Is n value 0? No, not 0, isn't it? Which means I will repeat. But before I repeat it, I will increment the value of count by 1. So see, I am marking it. Once I perform the operation, so I am incrementing the value of count by 1. Now this is a new value of n. n left shift by 1 I will do. I hope you are able to think. I will apply AND operation between both. This is the new value of n that I will get. Tell me, is it equal to 0? No, it is still not equal to 0, which means I have to continue this operation. But I did n and n left shift by 1 the second time. I'm marking it. I will increment the value of count. Count becomes 2. Again, with the updated value of n, again I will left shift it by 1 and I will perform and. If I perform and, n becomes 0. If n becomes 0, I will stop. But n and left shift of n by 1, I did it for the third time, I'm marking it, I'll increment the value of count. So if you notice it correctly, correctly, the longest sequence of 1s, I'm marking in the original n, is nothing but 3. There was 2 also, there was 3 also. There were 2 1s, there were 3 1s. But you got correctly 3, count value is 3. So it works perfectly. Because if you notice it, every time you do n and n left shifted by 1, in the updated value of n, do you see from the sequence of 1s, 1, 1 is getting reduced. From the 2 1s, 1 got reduced. From the 3 1s, 1 got reduced. Again, when you do AND operation, again 1 got reduced. So the single 1 became 0 and out of those 2 1s, now there is only a single 1 remaining. Again, if you do n and n left shifted by 1s, you get 0. So the number of times you can perform n and n left shifted by 1, updating the value of n with this operation, the number of times you can repeat this till n becomes 0 is nothing but the count of the longest sequence of 1s in the binary representation of n. As simple as that. Really, will this work? And will this solution be accepted by Microsoft? Definitely, you bet they would. Let's go code it. Now, very simple. I'll go change the name of this function. I will make this as a count consecutive. You make it as from is, you make it as count consecutive. And obviously, since I'm getting a count, it will be an integer value that I will be returning. Okay. Now, what I will do is I'll remove this entire code. Now, it's very easy, guys. See, I'll create an integer variable called as count. Okay, initially it will be 0. What do you have to do? Your core operation here is do n left and and n left shifted by 1s. This is the core operation, right? So whatever you get here, you are updating it as the value of n. You are updating this as the value of n. Now, whatever we discussed as logic, I am just showing those iterations there. So this should keep repeating till the updated value of n becomes 0. Would you agree with me? Right? And every time you do this, you must increment the value of count. So I'll just tell count plus plus. Count plus plus. How many times should this repeat? It should repeat as long as 
n is greater than 0 because the moment it becomes 0 you must stop. So, I will just put it I put a while loop and I will tell as long as n is greater than 0 and uh, I will put the bra braces as well. Cool. That is it guys simple as that. Will this work? Well, let us execute and check but before that we have to return value of count. So, we will just return it and I am going to come down and uh, I will just replace that with count consecutive. Great. Let us execute and uh, if in case I were to put maybe 101 then clearly it will give me 2. If I give 73 then uh, it has no consecutive ones. So, I will be getting uh, 1 here like this. Now, you must be wondering why did you get 1? 1 is the correct answer because look at 73 in binary. The longest sequence of consecutive 1 is 1 1 because the more than 1 1 there is no consecutive 1. So, answer is 1 only. So, it is correct. It is not that it is not correct. I hope you are able to think. So, anyways you understood that this program works correctly right. However, the question could be what is the time complexity of this? Let me just remove this. Now, watch it my dear friends, the majority of the execution happens in this loop. Would you agree with me? That is what is determining how much time it will take. Now, the exit condition is n has to become 0. So, let us take an input where in the worst case we will find out how many iterations it will take for n to become 0. So, let us assume n in binary was 8 ones. Now, it could be 8 ones, it could be 16 ones, it could be 32 ones, it could be 64 ones depending upon the type of integer data type you have. But if it works for 8, it works for everything, right? Now, if you look at this, now this n has to become 0. That is when it will stop. Now, when will it stop? First, n left shift by uh, 1. You do AND operation once. Again, the second time. Again, the third time. Fourth time. Fifth time. Sixth time. Seventh time. Finally, eighth time it becomes 0. You exit. 8 times it worked. So, 8 bits were 1. So, count is 8, correct? Longest sequence is 8 ones only. So, this is the worst case. Now, you have iterated over all the bits. You have iterated over all the bits. Now, you know whenever you are performing iteration on the bits of a number, the worst case time complexity is nothing but big O of log n. Now, that is big O of log n only. So, this is nothing but big O of log n. I hope everybody understood, right? Great. So, I hope you enjoyed today's program. Let us meet in the next class and solve some more really cool programs. But I sincerely hope you guys are practicing at your respective places. See you in the next class.